everybody. My name's uh, Dan Brennamer. I'm a technical fellow here at the X1 Company. And uh, like everybody else, I want to thank uh, Dendrite for inviting us to uh, be part of the conference here. And this is, uh, I think, my second or third uh, meeting as well. And it's a very exciting thing to be a part of. I was going to talk about, uh, you know, we do binder jetting here at X1. I was going to focus on all the things we do besides metals. We talk about our metal work all the time. But with 10 minutes, there just wasn't enough time for that. So instead, I'm going to focus on one of our newer products. Uh, it's called our 3D printed washout tooling and we use it for processing different types of sheet material. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, washout tooling, what it is, how it's used, how our process uh, differs from what's out there. And uh, then, you know, towards the end, why we'll have uh, some good Q&A, I hope. Just a quick uh, overview of the X1 company. I mean, we've been doing binder jetting for a little over 20 years. I started here in 2001. I was part of our first uh, commercially successful uh, printers. It was called the R2 at the time, our first drop on demand machine. Um, we, we sell a variety of different uh, types of machines for printing in metal, sand, ceramics, um, and all other types of uh, of just about anything powdered. We have, uh, of course, a job shop uh, in our North Huntington facility where we do all of our metals. We have a job shop in Troy for doing sand castings. We have a shop in St. Clairsville, Ohio, where we do uh, what I'm going to be talking about today. That's where our new markets group is. And uh, that's where we do our uh, washout tooling for composite parts. So introducing our washout tooling. So basically, you know, what washout tooling is used for is a whole class of composite or fiberglass type parts where you need to create a shape in some kind of a wrap, uh, typically with a hollow, you know, maybe it's a tube, maybe it's an air duct or a vent or something like this. And you need to have a way to form your composite around the tool, run it through your autoclave and, you know, come out with your part on the other side. Typically, uh, this is done with, you know, hard tools, metals, sections. It can be done with um, inflatable tooling, variety of different methods, but, and they all have their ups and downs and positives and negatives. And what we've come up with is a method of developing these tools that are completely uh, compatible with all of these other composite layup processes, but that ultimately when you're finished to clean out your tool, you just flush it out with water. And um, this is basically enabled by some unique uh, binders that we've developed over the years and some different uh, printing processes we've done. So, you know, the benefits of it are, you know, obviously it's a lot faster, you know, when we, we talk in additive, all of us who do additive, we talk about the benefits of speed over hard tooling. And one of the nice things about this is that we can, it's, there's no tool involved. You know, you print the tool and removing the tool is really fast and easy. Um, it's a very precise process. I mean, we print anywhere from 400 to 1200 DPI typically. So we can get very good, uh, we can get very good dimensional accuracy out of each part and you get a lot better uh, print to print kind of uh, repeatability. And like I say, it's easy. There's no solvents. There's no, there's no nothing but water. I mean, it's, it, it's a really neat thing to, to watch happen. And it's sustainable. You know, this, the um, sand and the ceramics that we use in this process are completely reusable, cleanable. So, you know, you can be using the same ton of, uh, of Sarah beads for, you know, a year. We have some uh, pretty high profile customers. I mean, you know, the, uh, the new CH helicopter, we do all of the internal ducting for that. Um, we've got uh, a, a variety of parts that we do on UAVs and all kinds of different tanks and whatnot, uh, DOD, uh, aerospace, all kinds of things. And then of course, an automotive, uh, you know, high strength, low weight is a big part of uh, NASCAR and a big part of uh, automotive in general. And so as, as these composite parts find more and more uses in industry, I'm sure that uh, our tools will too. Uh, so like I say, Sikorsky is one of the big benefactors here. They've been using uh, this process for a while. It's only recently that we've been rolling it out in uh, a little bit bigger audience here. And uh, we're now doing pretty much all of the uh, duct work on the new CH-53K helicopter. And uh, we're pretty proud of that. And also, you know, like I say, we uh, do a lot in NASCAR and uh, Formula One and we, um, 
you know, again, we supply the tools, we can supply the machines, we supply the technology, um, and it's uh, finding more and more uses as we go on. So basically, you know, I'm not going to get too much into the overall process of binder jetting. I think that uh, everybody on this call is probably familiar with that. I mean, if you're not, 30 seconds worth, it's a layered process, powder bed in general, and you glue stuff together. So we use uh, industrial print heads and we're basically shooting glue into a powder bed substrate a layer at a time. But in terms of like actually doing washout tooling, so you can see you've, you design your part, we just print it real quick. Uh, as you can imagine, it is, you know, like a sand or a ceramic, so you have to coat the surface to make sure that the epoxies don't penetrate in, but we have a variety of really easy to apply proprietary coatings, also water washout that uh, we found are very compatible. There's generally some type of filament winding machine, in this particular case we're looking at a fiberglass machine, but you know, as I say, this can be used for fiberglass, it can be used for composites, it can be used for a lot of things. All that gets uh, thrown into your, uh, I guess it should have said that on the last slide. So all, you do all that epoxying, you put it in a bag, you put it in an autoclave, run it through the temperature process for whatever your epoxy is. And then here at the very end, you pour some, uh, pour some water in one end and it all cleans out on the other. Some of the things that are so nice about this type of process, you know, we can build tooling into the mandrel itself, which is something that you can't really do. Uh, the way they do certain washout toolings now. Um, we can, you know, our machines are kind of big. I mean, 800 millimeters by 500 by 400 deep. But because of the nature of this technology, we can actually bolt these pieces together. We can make much larger uh, mandrels if we need to. And our machines go up to 1.8 meters in length. So we still have plenty of room to grow there. Um, and, you know, like here's another nice little feature. You know, we can make really complicated uh, mandrels that can be, you know, more or less outfitted with whatever it takes to, to integrate these tools with the automated process you already have. Oh, sorry. And then, you know, like this is just a, a basic comparison of all the different ways that you can get to uh, wash out tooling and, you know, we like to think we're the best, of course, but you know, lots of people do this in lots of different ways. And um, depending upon things like your uh, the quantity of pieces you're making, the whether this is a prototype or a tool or whatever, you know, the same the same things that come up in every uh, prototype versus production um, talk happen in this as well. But so just a little bit deeper dive into it. So, you know, like I say, we've been doing this a long time uh, and with binder jetting, we uh, have pretty much about the fastest processing speeds out there, really. Um, it's uh, got, you know, low cost to operate. It's easy, it's fast. And, you know, we can do this with a variety of materials. And in terms of our, one of the things that's kind of important in composites is, uh, you know, being able to match CTEs. And because binder jetting is by its nature, kind of open to a whole bunch of different types of materials and material systems, we generally can match just about any process with just about any powder and ultimately find a solution. Uh, oh, okay, well, here we go a little bit more in depth into what binder jetting is. So like I say, it's a uh, powder bed process there. We, our largest machine here is listed. That's our S max plus 1800 millimeters by a meter by 700 millimeters deep. Um, and of course you can learn more at x1.com slash binder jetting if you want to find out more about the actual process and how everything gets glued together. And so, you know, we do this in a variety of sand, in a variety of platforms. We have, uh, you know, our smaller machine, the S print, that's what I was talking about first. That's uh, 800 by 500 by 400 millimeters deep. It's got a really great build rate. You can basically, on all of these platforms, they basically will build their whole uh, platform top to bottom in about anywhere from 18 to 24 hours, depending upon your overall print settings. As I say, we can pick a whole bunch of different types of media. So whether we're talking about silica, whether we're talking about cerebeads or other types of ceramics or, you know, whole other classes of powders, uh, we can basically, you know, gluing stuff together is, is kind of the easy part, right? So we like to think that we can do that. 
uh, in a variety of ways and a variety of materials. Um, like I say, we have all kinds of different coatings. I, I, I think I'm just about running out of time, so I'm going to try to speed up here. I apologize. Uh, we've got a variety of coatings for these tools. One of the most common is what you see on the right. It's a Teflon tape wrap up. You just basically wrap the whole part. There is no coating beyond that. After you wash it out, you just pull out the Teflon. It's all nice and clean, but we can do this with a whole bunch of different, uh, different types of coatings for all kinds of crazy shapes. Just quick, uh, you know, these are our material properties. If you were a composite uh, scientist or a composite parts maker, these would be kind of uh, impressive to you, I think. But, you know, basically the, the point of this is to say that we can match your composite to one of our printing processes. And let's see, I got a couple more minutes here. So, you know, like I said, we were founded in 95. We used to be a part of uh, the Extrude Hone Company. We started as X1 around 2000. 6, 2007, we became public in 2013. We have about 80% of the market in terms of sand, uh, sand casting and digital casting molds. We're in pretty much every automotive, every, uh, every pretty much everybody that does sand castings in high volume has at least one of our machines. And we've been growing and growing year over year. Uh, we've got, as I say, we've got so many different ways that we can use this binder jetting technology. We talk about four principal forms and, you know, today I just wanted to talk about the one on the end here, uh, washout tooling, but here, here at uh, X1, we've got a huge variety of materials, machines, properties, processes that uh, we can bring to bear to solve, you know, all of the world's hardest engineering problems we like to think. Um, and uh, right. yeah, so there we go. You know, yeah, we can stop and get to the Q&A at this point. I'm just turning into a commercial. So uh, if there are some uh, questions, why? Move things forward. Okay. Um, so let's stop sharing your screen. Great. We've got one question. What software limitations are you running into with these larger parts? It seems like some of your parts are relatively simple geometrically, but when you start adding more surfaces, I would imagine that the computational demands become exponential. Uh, that's true. We've kind of figured that out, though. We actually have a uh, software patent on a technology that we call direct to bitmap that uh, is a method for pretty much screaming through, you know, we've, we've been able to process, you know, 20s to 50s of millions of triangles and turn them into bitmaps in pretty reasonable order. Um, you know, e even in our metal machines that we have downstairs, it's, uh, you know, like a 400 by 250 kind of uh, printing at 1200 DPI. And, you know, you're talking about basically 15 to 18 megabytes per layer. And we can generate that in a little bit less than a tenth of a second. So we've actually uh, got some pretty decent software ourselves. And, uh, but I will say this, uh, and I've told this to Dendrite, I think that uh, the X1 company actually has the best software out there for doing additive manufacturing until I was introduced to the Dendrite product. Thank you. Um, great compliment. All right. Um, so Dan from Fabio, Santa Ana. Dan, I agree with all the beauties of indirect additive. Why do you think it is not more spread yet? Don't you think it should be more used? Yeah, I think it's probably more used than you think, though. I think that from our, so, you know, one of the problems that X1 Company has had uh, historically, Fabio, has been that our, many of our customers view their choice to use, and, and I'm not bragging, many of our customers view their choice to use binder jetting as being a strategic choice, like choosing binder jetting as opposed to some other type of additive. And so we actually don't get to talk about our greatest win cases ever. And uh, I think that you'd be surprised to find, when I, when I say that we have 80 to 90% of the digital castings market, and I say that we're in every automotive company, I mean that like we have multiple machines in every automotive company. We have multiple machines at every heavy industrial user. And I think that part of that is because casting's a lot easier. You know, like we can qualify the casting without having to qualify the additive manufacturing process itself. And I think that that's been one of the things that kind of holds it up, at least in the metals. You know, whenever I first started in 2001, our metal product was all infiltrated. It was like a 420 
uh, stainless body infiltrated with bronze. And nobody could ever understand why in the world would I use that material. And we couldn't really explain it all that well either, except that it worked. And there was really kind of, you know, it, it, it had no number on it that an engineer could point to on her drawing and say, well, I want this made out of stainless 316. And I think one of the biggest things that's held us back anyway in binder jetting has been that, you know, we've been trying to develop these materials. Now we can say, okay, I can do 316L and it's just like the 316 that you're gonna get from any other powder bed pro or from any other powder metallurgy process. Um, for the longest time, we didn't have that. But now that we have the material, as you know, we're still trying to get the spec, right? So like now that we can, now that we get the material to work and we get the properties, but now we have to prove all those things like the powder supplies and that they don't change over time, that the machine runs the same way. And, you know, I mean, we've been working, uh, well, as you know, Fabio, we've been working at, the, at, at ASTM on these standards and I've been doing a lot at SAE and I'm gonna talk a little bit about tomorrow at the ASTM conference. Um, but I think that the standards are, are, are going to be a huge enabler to unlock in demand.